to have you all on board with me this afternoon because we are going to be going on an adventure together. For the next 35 to 40 minutes or so, we're going to be traveling across five different continents and going through thousands of years of history in the animal kingdom. And we don't even have to leave the world famous San Diego Zoo. I'll be teaching you about some of the 12,000 animals that we have here, many of which are rare and endangered. So we'll also talk about a thing or two that you can do right at home to help save those endangered species. Because it is our goal here at the San Diego Zoo to create a world where all life thrives. Now there on the right, that's going to be the entrance to Tree Top Way, where you can see monkeys and apes of all sizes swinging around all day. We also have this fabulous flamboyance of the North American flamingos on the right. They happen to be the most pink of all six species. I do love the color pink. Now straight ahead of us, we have Sky Far East. And that's the gondola ride that's going to take you high in the sky from the front to the back, from the back to the front of the zoo, whichever way you want to take it. It is a great way to get a bird's eye view of all that we have to offer here. And down that way we also have the reptile house. The reptile mesa where you're going to find the big Galapagos tortoises, some of which are over 100 years old. And that's also where the hummingbird habitat and Komodo Kingdom are located, our two newest habitats here at the San Diego Zoo. So we're going to dip on down into the Lost Forest right now. Woo! So please feel free to put your hands up and say, Whee! Whee! <laughs> now the Lost Forest here is in the center of your map, surrounded by all of the green stuff if you'd like to follow along. And if you don't have a map on you, please don't feel left out. You can always download the San Diego Zoo map app straight to your phone. And of course that does help us a little bit by going paperless because we're here to save the trees too. And before we get to our very first habitat on the tour, I want to give you all a quick little safety reminder because I want everybody to have the best view and the best time today. So if you can stand up and move around, that's totally fine. Just hold on to any one of those silver railings on either side of the bus. And let's keep our hands, feet, arms, legs, toes, tails, trunks, snoot, snorns, horns, tails, snails, scales, and I don't know, whatever else you have on you inside the bus at all times. Nobody's allowed to go overboard today. And certainly not next to the, the Malayan tiger habitat here on the right. Now let's see if we have any of our tiger boys out and about. We do have three male Malayan tigers that live here, and they are all brothers. The oldest brother, his name is Connor, and usually he's hanging out right about over here. And then his two younger brothers are doing the wrong thing down below where we have these big glass windows and tiger river. But, I don't know about you, but I can't see long ears, can you? No? Okay, well, maybe Connor is just getting a little bit of lunch right now and hiding away from the paparazzi. Yeah, we'll keep on moving. We do have Connor's sister who lives over on Center Street. Oh, I thought I saw something moving around back there. Well, I think he's just in the very dark right corner, but he knows where the lunch comes from, and that's where he's waiting right now. Yes, we'll all in forward as we kind of scoot away from here and let you guys say hi to him. But I think he's going to be hanging out uh, waiting for his next meal. Okay. Alright, we're going to start scooching forward. We are going to say hi to Connor's sister over on Center Street it's a little bit later in our tour. So, don't, don't you worry, we'll be seeing the tiger soon. You kind of see his stripes passing around back there, right? Well, we'll keep on moving through our rainforest here. Now, this area is designed after an Asian rainforest where we do have one of our eight hubs of conservation that we have all around the world. And it's designed like this to give you guys the experience of traveling through a rainforest. And it feels like home for a lot of the animals that we have here. For somebody like we have up next, who happens to be one of the world's most dangerous animals. Can anybody tell me who this could be? Yeah, you guys got it. Sounds like we got some zoo experts on board. Well, that is correct. Over here is where Otis, our big male hippo, is in the pool today. He has a pool on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and weekends, that's when his long-time girlfriend and the baby that they have together gets to the pool. And we need to keep them separated on certain days of the week because Mama Hippo, her name is Punani, 
she is very protective of her baby named Omajle. And then Otis, he's a bit of a jealous boyfriend. And he's not just any jealous boyfriend, he is a 4,000 pound jealous boyfriend. So we will just keep them separated until mama decides that baby is ready to be on her own. And typically you will find the, the hippo in the pool here. They only really come up on land to pee. But they spend about 16 hours a day totally submerged in water. As you can imagine, it's a little bit easier on their joints. The kit makes them more buoyant. They don't have to carry all that weight around all day. And uh, they spend all the time in water despite the fact that hippos can't even swim. They don't even float either. They just kind of bounce around and they uh, use the momentum of their body weight to push off the floor of the pool or that river and glide through the water like a big old 4,000 pound ballerina. It's so graceful. And then just past Otis's pool here, I see some tall striped legs under the ficus trees. Let's see if they're gonna move around. Can anybody see that animal way back there behind the trees? Does anybody know what that is? Well, if they do come a little bit closer to us, you might get a better idea. But I'll let you know that that is the okapi. And they are a very interesting creature that we actually thought didn't even exist, like if they were a myth, like a unicorn, until about 95 years ago, when we did end up finding some of them in uh, West Africa. However, the people living in West Africa, they have known about the Okapi for thousands of years. So we've, uh, we've collaborated with them quite a bit to learn about the Okapi, you know, things to do to keep them healthy. And we've taught them a thing or two as well. We found out that these spike trees are super, super healthy and nutritious for them, so that's why we planted those here. And uh, does anybody know what the Okapi is most closely related to? Zebra mm -hmm. is a great guess. I would imagine so because of those legs, right? But actually the giraffe, yeah, you got it. They are the only living relative of the giraffe. And it's because they have a 15 inch purple tongue that they use to help strip these nice ficus trees at a good nine foot height. So we plan it that way. We don't need gardeners. The Okapi do all the work for us. Well, we'll keep on moving here. See what we have next. You now the rainforest is home to monkeys and apes of all sizes and shapes. Do we have anybody on board that can give me a good monkey call? Let's hear it. <laughs> a for effort, everybody. Good job. Because over here on the right, we do have some of our primate friends. These are going to be the Allen Swamp Monkeys and the Red Tail Gwenins. They also live here with the little spot neck otters, but supposedly they be hanging out at the water's edge. And we do have these three species of animal hanging out together in the same enclosure for something called social enrichment. And that just means that they learn their very best social skills from animals that are a little bit different from themselves. So we want to make sure that we give them the opportunity to gain them social skills that they went out there in the wild, just here in the San Diego Zoo. And you'll see actually right in front of us now, we have uh, quite a few little itty bitty baby monkeys. Well, Mama just gave birth to quite a few little babies. And uh, that is due to the fact that we rescued a lot of these monkeys from the illegal wildlife trafficking trade. These little guys, they are bought and sent and shipped and sold all over the world for a few different reasons. They are used as pets, you know, not awful, but not great. And uh, they're also used for their meat in certain parts of the world. It's called bush meat. And their body parts are also used as souvenirs. So as awful as that is, it is unfortunately alive and well today. So when we found out about this happening, we stepped in and rescued all of the monkeys that we could find from that illegal trafficking trade. And we brought them back here to give them a second chance at life. And we give those mama monkeys an opportunity to raise babies of their own. Now, she certainly would not be able to do that if she was somebody's pet or work. And we are going to start to exit our rainforest here, and we are going to take a left turn for bird country. We're going to start to see this tall bridge ahead of us, and that is part of the Eagle Trail. That's where you'll find the big birds of prey, like the hardy eagle and the Indian condors, which happen to be the biggest birds in all of North America. They are quite a sight to see. And now on the left, we have our African marsh with the lesser flamingos. You'll see these guys are less pink than the ones at the very front. 
But don't worry, they still eat plenty of shrimp and crab to get that color. They just don't get as bright as the ones up front because they are just a different species from a different part of the world. Remember, there are six species of flamingos all around the world. And we also have our white breasted cormorants in the nest here. The giant white pelicans. The blue heron, which are a native species of San Diego. And the occasional little freeloader that lives here. Yeah, I'm looking at you ducks. They're really just here to steal our snacks. We're also passing by kangaroo bus stop number two. You guys will see that yellow kangaroo stop with the number two in it. And it looks like there's a kangaroo bus right behind us right now. Has anybody uh, used the kangaroo bus today? No? Okay. Well, it is kind of like a city bus service for everybody here at the zoo. You can hop on or off at any one of the four stops that are all around the park, and they will get you wherever you need to go. It's really, really useful if you are super tired from doing all the walking around the zoo, and you don't want to, you know, get yourself on foot from the front to the back or vice versa. And it is totally included in your day pass or your membership, and they run up until the time that we close. So do yourself a favor later on and hop on that kangaroo bus. Now we've exited the African marsh. We don't have those tall grasses all around us anymore. We don't have the palm trees of the rainforest, but we're going to start to see the pine trees from the Arctic. I wonder where we're headed next. 